Ooh. Hello. That is, uh, that's Muse. And time is running out. Is that the name of the song? Anyway, hi, it's Adam and Joe here. Uh, on XFM 104.9, we're still filling in for Ricky and Steve. They're gonna be back at the beginning of November. Who cares when they're gonna be back? Everybody cares. Everybody cares, especially Heat Magazine. We've been monitoring Heat Magazine's reviews of our shows. Are you listening, Heat Magazine? Is yeah. anyone from Heat Magazine? Oh, there it is. Hello, he hello Heat Magazine. Yes. Hello, Heat Magazine. Oh, you have you got latest gossip? Yeah, oh yes, we got it, oh yes, oh, the latest gossip. What's everybody talking about this week, Heat Magazine? Hey, be careful, <laughs> actually be careful, Adam, do a better voice for Heat Magazine. Yeah. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Um, no, what's wrong with my voice? <laughs> it's not a very flattering voice for Heat That's Magazine. That's the way I speak, what? <laughs> um, this week, everyone's talking about <laughs> J-Lo. What? What's wrong with my voice? That's not true, Heat Magazine. This week, you claim that everyone's talking about the return of Dirty Den. Oh yes, that too. Who have you been talking to about the return of Dirty Den? Mm. Have you just everyone on the bus, isn't it? Like a ram shambling old man. Well, someone mentioned it to us in a meeting. Oh, our agent mentioned it to us in a meeting. She said, if you were doing like the Adam and Joe show now, you could do the return of Dirty Den with the puppets. That's why we're not doing the Adam <laughs> and Joe show now. <laughs> yeah. Well, what happened to Heat Magazine? Bring back Heat Magazine. Uh, hello! <laughs> <laughs> so, your review of us this week, Heat yes. Magazine, yet again, it doesn't even. Well, okay, it says. Adam and Joe, XFM 1pm, we're dying to see the Office Christmas specials, but their filming schedule means we're deprived of XFM Spinmeisters, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant for yet another week. Yes, that's right. Well, the thing <laughs> is, you've got to remember, Joe, that you are fairly third division, you and Adam, uh, on the celebrity interest I wouldn't run. say that was true, Adam. Well, it is for we, hate readers. No, we, we were very, very big. Oh, come on. I'll finish this, uh, <laughs> this interview. Still, me Messrs Cornish and Buxton are perfectly able to go. entertain the bejesus out of you, so let's not panic just yet. Perfectly able. Yeah. That's not very nice, Heat Magazine. That's just like saying adequate. Well, it could be worse. I'm Aye. going now. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Uh, so anyway, how's your week been apart from the, uh, Shall we play a record? That was such a great opportunity to play a record. Yeah. Bang. Bang. <laughs> a record. We missed it, but I want to find out, like, well, what else is going to be in the show? I mean, I can tell you music-wise, listeners, that we've got, uh, smashes coming at you from the Strokes, the Sleepy Jackson, the Breeders, the Hot Hot Heat, the Gold Frap. It's all coming up in the next couple of hours, as well as, uh, fantastic competitions. You might be walking away today, or whatever, with, uh, tickets to Sleepy Jackson. Uh, they're playing at the Astoria. That's gonna be a good gig on Tuesday. Uh, fantastic CDs to be won. You can enter our competition. We've got another very bad accent for you this week. Um, what are you doing, Sorry, Joe? I was just cl clearing my nose with a sniffle. Keep going, though. It's good. Don't clear your nose on the radio. Oh. Bit of a loogie That's on, the on the bottle. You're a <laughs> I'm just trying to counteract person. your, you know, rather, yeah, it was good, but you know, spiel about what's coming up in the show. Would just you... trying to balance it with some with something earthy. So, Joe, you realise we're on <laughs> we're on like we're on the radio. You realise that it's like a radio <laughs> program. With yeah. You? Okay. Yeah. Just checking. Sorry, I bumped no into your listening. dad on the way to the the uh, tube station. Today. Did you? Yeah. He's he's not what he told his lawyer. He um didn't want to chat. <laughs> I'm, pretty that mean? Sure, I'm pretty sure he was avoiding my gaze as I was walking down the street. But then I got him just at the last minute and said, hello. And he said, oh, hello. Uh, you're off to the radio station, aren't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, better let you go. <laughs> and that was, that was it. But he says hi, <laughs> I think. Um, well done, Dad. Yeah, well done. No, that's yeah. good. I like someone who can handle uh, an encounter. You would have started talking to him about the com return of Dirty Den. About the return of Dirty Den? Yeah. No, I wouldn't. If I'd worked for Heat Magazine, I might, but as I'm a normal person, I wouldn't. And you went to see Kill Bill. You've had a movie-packed week. I've had a showbiz-packed week, Adam. Kill Bill. Yeah. And the, uh, early screening of the new Shaun of the Dead film, an early cut, the new I've zombie film. I've seen Shaun of the Dead. By, uh, which is made by the people who made Space, mm. Simon Pegg, mm. Edgar Wright. Mm. And we'll be talking about that later on. But first, music. Is this Oasis? Hope not. Shut up. That's the Oasis and Stop Crying Your Heart I'll Out. Stop Crying My Heart Out when they stop singing lovely songs, they're my favourite. <laughs> 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 Joe's going to be unkind about Oasis. What's wrong with that? Brian, the producer, just... Why? Why are you stopping me from... Waved at Adam him. loves them. I don't like them. That's good balance. <laughs> you love them, don't you, Adam? Yeah, they're very good. Mm, there we go. So, it's exciting news for people who eat at Mickey Donald's this week. 
Mike Donald's. Mike Donald's restaurant. Restaurant. <laughs> um, because I ate there this this uh, this week. Did you? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, yeah. What did you eat? I <laughs> I ate chicken strips. Chicken strips. They tasted like cabbage. Oh. It was. You know, they've got Mickey D's in um, hospitals now. Do they really? Yeah. You know, they've got. That's the way they do catering in hospitals. They have branches of Mickey D's. Well, when you just go into any Mickey D's now, it's sort of like being in a hospital in the in a mental hospital. Yeah. In that the only people who eat there are mental. Yeah. Well, that's kind of true. It depends which branch you go into. Well, I was in Victoria Street, where we used to bunk off school and go and have, um, breakfast at McDonald's when we were at school years ago, but they've refurbished it now. It's got the Muck Cafe and stuff like this. Anyway, to cut to the chase, uh, when I like got- this, Sorry, do you like this music? Well, what- what is it? It's from something, isn't it? It's kind of- it's from a- da -da -da, da -da -da. commercial or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no, anyway, I don't. Did, I hate it. Didn't mean to put you Um, on. it's rubbish. Oh, so we- I was at McDonald's and then I got served my food and you know- you know the piece of paper on the tray? That yeah, always yeah. has an exciting advert on it. Well, it's got this amazing new promotion, and lo and behold, it's in all the magazines today. Uh, it's a message from Andrew Taylor, the chief executive of McDonald's restaurants, and he's announcing that it's it's everyone's chance to view a side of McDonald's restaurants that customers have rarely had the chance to see before. From October the 18th to the 30th, you can step behind the counter to watch our busy <laughs> kitchen staff in action. Full stop. This man actually wrote that sentence. As part of our new Open Doors program, you'll be able to, among other things, take a closer look at the equipment we use to store and prepare your food, and also witness some of the 100 safety checks that we make daily in every McDonald's restaurant across Shut the UK. Up. That's and, not really no, this is there. true. And this is announced by a full page advert in all the magazines this week, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 photos of behind the scenes at McDonald's, including a toilet door. Uh, at the bottom of a door, a, ste <laughs> <laughs> a steel cupboard, a cooker, and a no-entry sign. What is going on there? And it says at the bottom, uh, the, the Golden Arches logo and the words, I'm loving it, are trademarks of McDonald's. So they've now copyrighted the phrase, I'm loving it. No, they can't have that. No, they've done it, mate. What's and not only um, that, but they're, they're inviting you to see behind the scenes. What's Dermot O'Leary gonna do if they've copyrighted I'm loving it? He's gonna have to pay McDonald's a lot of money. Flippin' egg. So let us know if, um, if you're gonna take them up on that offer. They used to do kids' parties where you could go behind the scenes and go inside the big freezer. Well, oh, that's not good for kids though, is it? Well, some kid I think in Atlanta got locked inside the freezer and nearly died. Well, that's bound to happen. Uh, uh, uh yeah, I might get s- yeah. <laughs> not sure that really happened. <laughs> I think it happened. Might be an urban myth. Well, anyway, yeah, so that's anyone... exciting news from McDonald's fans. You can see behind the scenes. If anyone takes the behind the scenes tour, we'd love to hear about it. I guess it's just, um, generally about people's obsession with all things real. Maybe they think that it's gonna be some kind of crazy reality type show if, if they go. I mean, it's gonna be like real life, I suppose. Well, but... it's just gonna be people cooking burgers on cookers. Yeah, so under, underpaid, you but, know. But I suppose not flobbing on them. No, exactly. Well, people will be mar uh, marvelling at the high standards, I suppose. Yeah, the fact that they're not there, they're not being flobbed on visibly. Yeah, and there's no rats or anything involved. Yeah. People will be really knocked out yeah. by that. Well, that's interesting. Um, let's hear some more music now. This is Joe Strummer and the Mascaleros with Coma Girl. You're listening to Adam and Joe on XFM. We're filling in for I Ricky and Stephen. Hello, this is Adam and Joe, uh, filling in for Ricky and Steve on XFM. One London's 104.9. This sounds pre-recorded, doesn't it? Yeah, that was Hello. amazing. <laughs> Hello. 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 That was your kids' TV yeah. voice. Hello. It's Ad and Joe in Da Bungalow. In Da Bungalow. So we're just, uh, spending a few minutes at the top of the show here, talking about interesting things we've seen in print this week. In magazines. In magazines. Mm. Joe was, uh, intrigued by the invitation to go behind the scenes at McDonald's. Can you imagine? Wow. Wow. Um, I was intrigued by, actually this was pointed out to me, because I don't actually read the Sunday Times. Well, you don't actually read. I don't really read. Uh, but someone told me that I should check out the bit at the end of the Sunday Times magazine. It's a life in the day where, you know, you, a person talks about a typical day of theirs. And, uh, last week it was author Jan Martel, 40 years old, who won the 2002, uh, Booker, Booker Prize, Prize for Life of Pi. Life of Pi, mm. correct. Have you read that? Uh, I haven't. I've looked at the cover and the back cover and, yeah, uh, so in a way I have. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing. What does he say then? Well, he's kind of a ponce, and he lives in Montreal, in Canada. Ponce. Um, and he, uh, yeah, he's just a bit of a nonce. Um... He's a nonce as well. No, he's not a nonce, because that's... No, that's bad, isn't that's it? That's bad, isn't oh, it? Oh, dear. Um, he says, among the things he says <laughs> that stand out are... 
He talks about food. <laughs> I listen to- Just nonce me. It's a kiddie fiddler. Okay. I okay. thought it was just someone who sung to the coppers. Nah. All right. Leave- leave the nonce. Keep going. Uh, so Yan says, <laughs> stop giggling. I listen to music while I'm eating, uh, while I'm eating lunch. I, I should do a voice for Yan. What's yes. It? Well, he's Canadian, so he speaks really, really oddly. I met a Canadian guy this week. They do speak very strangely. Go on, like in South speak? Park. You know, I can't do it. It's very, very Oot. odd. They say Oot. Yeah, it's very Oot. strange. Well, I can't do that. Anyway, so he says, food doesn't interest me, though I eat properly to be healthy. But in the West, we eat much more than we need. I drink lots of water, but I've never touched alcohol. I find getting drunk disgraceful. It's fine for a special occasion, but always on a Saturday night, that's profoundly sad. There are things in life that elevate you, such as relationships, art, and travel, but alcohol and drugs degrade you. God, I sound censorious, but they really do. Do you agree with that, Joe? Uh, yeah, but that's the point of alcohol and drugs, isn't it? <laughs> to get degraded. <laughs> yeah, he's missed the point. <laughs> Later on, he says, In the afternoon, I'll work if I feel like it, or go to a yoga class. A while back, I did it every day. I like being in my body. It's a book we borrow <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> what? He likes being in his body. What? He says, it's a book we borrow temporarily, so we should use it while we have it. It's about facing up to your own mortality, knowing we're here for a short time and making the most of <laughs> That's it. a good voice. It's not Canadian, but he probably talks like that. I think he probably does. And then later on, he says, in the evenings, I'll meet friends. Riding is an isolating experience, and I'm not very social by nature, so I make an effort to go out, maybe see a film film or some contemporary dance. I love everything from <laughs> art house films to the latest James Bond. Oh, how very, very d uh, dangerous yeah. and experimental. The latest James Bond. Have you seen the latest James Bond? No. Oh, it's rubbish. It's degrading. It's degrading. I got so drunk when I saw it. It didn't make any sense James at all. Bond is a video that we borrow. Because I'm single, he continues, I mainly eat out at the same kind of vegetarian places where I get my lunch. I'll go home and shower. I love standing beneath hot water. <laughs> I can arrange that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, after I've stood beneath hot water, which I love to do, I crawl into bed. And that is the day in the life of Jan Martel, a ponce. Joe, why are you playing this? I'm not controlling the desk. That was just a musical sting to add punch to the end of your riff. <laughs> I was so pleased with myself as well. I thought, what was that anyway? I don't know. What was it? it was Adam's fault. Adam's, guys, fault. Adam's fault. Adam's fault. Adam's fault. Adam's fault. It might be really good. Adam's listen, fault. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. To go to the ad break. Come okay, on. sorry. Thanks a lot. Many strange things already. Bloody wolves chasing me through some blue inferno. Through some blue inferno. That was last week's bad accent. We got another bad accent competition coming up very, very, very soon. So stay tuned. You can win what, Adam? You could win tickets to see the Sleepy Jackson. They're going to be playing at the Astoria on Tuesday, and it's sure to be a very good gig. Everyone's excited about Sleepy Jackson. It was Adam and Joe filling in for Ricky and Stephen on XFM? We've been going through uh, the weirdest stuff we've seen in magazines this week. So I've got some kind of, uh, jazzy commercial sounding music now. Yeah. And our final weird thing we've seen in magazines this week is an advert for a new fragrance for men. Mm. Uh, it's called Higher Energy and it's by Dior. And there's posters for it all over London on bus stops and on the back of a lot of, um, magazines today. For instance, on the Independent on Sunday magazine. And it's a male model, uh, reasonably attractive bloke. Lisa, you're a lady? Yeah, he's alright, isn't he? Looks a bit like a sort of young wino. I think he's fantastic. <laughs> he's stubbly, he's got long hair, he's looking angry and, and thick. And he's got a white shirt on and it's open. And the thing about this advert is he's got a nipple exposed and it's tiny. Tiny nipple? It's the tiniest man nipple I've, I think I've ever seen. And what's more, it's, uh, it's too far over to his right, uh, the viewer's left. I, this isn't very good radio, is it? But keep an eye out for it in the street. It's a Dior advert tiny, tiny nipple man. 
tiny. How big are your nipples? Well, they're bigger than that, but well, you're obsessed by nipples. I'm man. not obsessed by nipples. You are, I've noticed that you talk about them a lot more <laughs> than normal people do. Well, it's because we were going to do a thing uh, earlier in our run because someone said there's a sort of golden mean, an absolute average for nipple distribution. Yeah. Because when we were in Japan, it's something like the distance between your nipples should be the same as what? I'm gonna have to think about this and come back to it, but as there the, is... No, uh, it's the distance between your nose and your... and your... And the nape of your neck. And, yeah. There's something. some sort of... Yeah, the perfect attractive... If, if your nipples are the right distance apart, you are Im gonna be amazingly attractive. It's something like your finger span or something, is it? So if you uh, extend your hand from no. uh, thumb to index finger, c you can touch both nipples. That doesn't matter. I'm gonna think about this and come back to it. It's a great subject, because everyone's got them, Ad. That's the thing about my radio work. It really embraces everybody. <laughs> Subjects wish. like that. Well, yeah, we'd love to hear from maybe doctors or beauty specialists, anyone who knows the answer to that question. Is there an ideal distance between nipples? You know, you can email us at adamandjoe at xfm.co.uk. Adam, A N D Joe. Uh, at xfm.co.uk and we read or I read all your emails I'm like the chick on on the Matthew Wright show on channel 5 who sits in the box with the headphones on yeah the right stuff <clears throat> the right stuff yeah I'm like that chick I read all the emails so if you want to send any personal messages to me Joe the good looking one you're not that per you're not as perky email in. did you go and see Co agent Cody Banks with those girls that emailed you the other day no? I don't, don't remember that email. <laughs> oh, would have been up for that. That was filthy, man. They emailed us and they, I can't even talk about what they said, but they said, uh, if you're up for it, let's go and see I'm Agent Cody it. Banks. Well, I, th I saw you writing down their number. <laughs> I did not write down their number. <laughs> well, listen, after this, we're going to be having our, uh, mystery accent competition, and if you can guess the actor, the accent, and the film, then you will win tickets to see Sleepy Jack. I can't believe I missed a chance to see Agent Cody Banks. I wrote the number down, man. Just find it, it's in your pocket. That sounds like, it sounds like sort of, uh, OAPs, that does. OAPs. Sing, singing while they wait, wait for their hair to be done. It's, <laughs> Oh, wait, and then trying to dignify it with some Zetars. Zetars? Zetars. <laughs> Zetars. Catherine Zetars. <laughs> uh, Oapies would be a good name for Oasis when they get older. Yep. Uh, so anyway, bad accents. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the support. <laughs> Said yup. Joe. What more do you need? Uh, what's... Uh, oh, we've had no emails. Come on, please email us. Adam and Joe at xfm.co.uk. That's not true, we haven't had no emails, but we just haven't had the huge rush that I thought would happen when I gave the address out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, too who, who was the... <laughs> too she. Um, well, who was the person that we cut off, the record that we cut off before? Um, okay, we have had an email about that. It was Watermelon by the Boxer Rebellion. You played it accidentally and then ruthlessly cut it off, and one listener is a big fan of it. Well, I'm really sorry, Gina. Um, I, I, it was my incompetence, and I'm sure it's excellent, and maybe one day we'll play it again. But listen, it's bad accent time. If you want to win God, tickets... God, patronising. Joe, just shut <laughs> up. Just go. Um, Sleepy Jackson, okay? If you want to go and have tickets to Sleepy Jackson, uh, then give us a call... What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Well, just, just looking at you. Two. Don't. Just don't look at me. <laughs> um, so well, anyway, so okay. Serious. You know. Okay. Listen, I'm going to play you an accent right now. Who is the actor? What is the accent he's doing? It's pretty. It's kind of obvious. And what's the film? We need all three. I think we've got to be ruthless. Ruthless with this thing now. So, uh, okay. Who's this? Listen. Right. We'll be evil. I'm not evil, oh man. Go over to Doctor Lady. Mom, going to be fine. Look. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Uh, it's not Jamaican. Oh, sh don't give it away, man. No, it's, it's clearly not Jamaican. Well, uh, you know, I can tell you that it is supposed to be Jamaican. So, is we've, it? yeah, we provided you with one of the one of the one of the answers <laughs> today. Now you have to tell us who it is and what film there is. That's in. hard enough. I'll give you a different uh, snippet right now. Listen. No, be a sister. No devil. No dopey. Everything going to be iry. Oh. See, you can tell it's Jamaican because of everything, everything going to be iry. Because that's what they talk like the Jamaicans. Wow. All the time, they wonder, are everything gonna be iry? You know what? Just for a moment, I felt like everything was gonna be iry. Well, it's not. It's all going to go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be evil, I'm not evil, oh man. Go over to Dr. Lady Mom, gonna be fine, though. 
That's pretty easy, come on. The tickets to Sleepy Jackson are yours. All you have to do is phone 08700 800 1234 and we will take, mm, I don't know, maybe we'll take the first correct answer we get, pretty much, as long as you don't sound like a complete lunatic. Um, and you'll win those tickets to Sleepy Jackson. So, so get phoning right now, 08700 800 1234. Tell us who this is. No, be a sister, no devil, no doppy. Everything gonna be iry. Thanks a lot. Music to Zapora. Everything gonna be iry. Oh, yeah. That was the strokes and 12.51. Is it time to go to the phone lines to it, find out, uh, what people think, who people think that is? Yeah, let's just, uh, remind you again of, uh, this week's bad accent. Right, dear. We'll be evil, I not evil, oh, man. Go over to Dr. Lady Mom, I'm gonna be fine, now. It's kind of Jamaican via hell. So, let's see. I think we've got Dominic on line one. Dominic, are you there? Hello. Hey, how you doing? Hello, Hello Dominic. Yourself? Yeah, very good, thanks. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling today? <laughs> yeah, not too bad, thank Good you. question, Ed. Thanks very much. Yeah. So listen, let's cut to the quick. Well, no, let's go into more detail. No, uh, any, any pains? No pains at all, no. no none at all? No, none whatsoever. Feeling fresh and, and, and perky? As a daisy. Did As you a daisy. Get, did you drink too much last night, Dominic? I didn't actually, no, I was driving, so I couldn't really drink too much. Well, that's good, because it's degrading. It's um, great. so let's see, who was that accent, and, uh, what film was it? I think it was Gary Oldman in True Romance. Good guess, because Gary Oldman does play a terrible sort of a white raster in True Romance. He Quite does. a frightening white raster. But unfortunately, not the correct answer. I'm sorry, oh, Dominic. Okay. Okay. But listen, thanks very much indeed for phoning in. You're welcome. And well done not drinking and driving. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have a good weekend. Okay, let's see, uh, Vaughan, we've got you on line two, I hope. Are yep. you there? Hello, yep. Vaughan. You got me, yeah. Hi. Hello, Vaughan. How are you going? Where are you calling from, Vaughan? Uh, I'm just on the A2 at the moment. <laughs> Oh. Vaughan, you're an Australian gentleman, and you shouldn't be phoning from your car, you naughty Australian. No, it's on the hands-free, so it's not too bad. That's okay, okay then. Uh, so listen, let's, let's get to it before you, uh, get involved in a pile-up. What is the actor <laughs> and what film is it? I think it's Brad Pitt <gasps> and, uh, Meet Joe Black. Oh, yes, Very that's good. absolutely correct. Vaughan, you're going to see Sleepy Jackson on Tuesday at the Astoria? Are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, Vaughan, did you like Meet Joe Black? Uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. No, yeah, come on, it was. It was a bit of a chick flick, but... You know what, I'd say it actually was too bad. No, come on, I enjoyed Meet Joe Black. It's all awful. Awful. All right, it's got that in it. It's How can you argue stinker. it? stinker. Well, listen, Vaughan, we're not gonna keep you, but thank you so much for calling in. We really appreciate it, and congratulations, you're our winner this week for our Bad Accent competition. Take care. Uh, so, there we go. God, you're getting so slick. Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to start messing things up a bit more. No, please don't do that. Well, the slicker you get, the more rubbish I'm gonna get. Everything gonna be iry. No, it's not. Yeah, that's a smash, isn't it? That's Gold Frap and Twist, the single mix. That's going to be out on the 20th of October. And, uh, it's Brian, our producer's favourite album of the year that that comes from, Black Cherry. Oh, thanks for telling us that. So, well, you know, yeah, Brian, Brian. Is, he's kind of an expert on music and, and cherries, so he thinks that one's a smash. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the first hour of our show. We've got more great music coming up as well as, you know, fascinating rubbish. And, um, also Ditties in the Dock. We're going to be battling it out for again this week. Joe's going to be telling you all about the exciting movies he's seen. I'm going to be, uh, telling you about my trip to the Q Awards. All that's God, coming in the next hour. It's tedious. Joe, uh, maybe you could kind of <laughs> adjust your attitude? It just sounds boring, that's all. Well, you make it sound interesting then. I just did, by saying it was boring. <laughs> now, you see, that's pathetic. And, um, um, I'm going to, um, just talk to you in, in the ad break. Okay. Right now, here's the Smiths. This, this is for Andrea, isn't it? Yeah, it's for Andrea. Attitude adjustment.
Yeah, that was Athlete with You Got The Style. Uh, in the next hour you can expect more fantastic music from the likes of The Dub Pistols, The Coral, Mark Ronson and Ghostface Killer. That's a good record. I'm looking forward to that one. Why? Because it's a hip-hop yeah, record. Yeah, because I like hip-hop. You love hip-hop. I love hip-hop and there's not enough of it on XFM. Well, it's kind of an indie, uh, rock station. Yeah, but hip-hop's hip -hop's indie. All the kids are into hip-hop. Come on, XFM. Get your act together. Not everyone likes guitar dirges all the time. There's other radio Tassin stations beats. for hip-hop, Joe. Did you understand? Well, there's choice. choice. Yeah, but it'd be good kiss. if it was a nice mix of, like, uh, actually, they do play quite a lot of hip-hop on XFM. It's okay. Anyway, so we've had a, a glamorous week, weeks, haven't we, Adam? Showbiz week. Yeah, because we're D-list celebrities. F. F-list celebrities. We aspire to D. <laughs> you went to the Q Awards this week, for instance, didn't you? Yeah, so that, I guess that makes me a Q-list celebrity. <laughs> 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 and what happened there? You got chatting to some pop stars. Yeah, I'll tell you about that in a second. I want to okay. hear about your movie trips. Okay, well this week I saw a, a very, very sneaky preview of a new British zom rom-com. A zombie romantic comedy by the people that made Spaced. It's called Shaun of the Dead. It stars Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, both in Spaced. Uh, Dylan Moran is in there. Kate Ashfield is in there. Johnny Vegas! Johnny Vegas isn't in there. Why? Uh, which means it, it'll probably, well, because... He's uh, got to be in every British film! Yeah, it's true, isn't it? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything nice to say <laughs> in reply to that. <laughs> Was it good? Uh, it really, genuinely was really, really excellent, because I'm a horror film aficionado, and, uh, so, I, and basically I was, I was hoping it would fail. Yeah, cause... Because I fancy myself as a filmmaker, and I like to see people I know who are making films fail. And generally people in Britain like to see British films fail. Don't we? There's nothing we like more than something being bad. But Shaun of the Dead is genuinely, uh, as frightening as American Werewolf. Is it really? That's quite a high claim, isn't it? But yeah, it ga it made me laugh. It creeped me out. It's much creepier than, uh, 28 Days Later. Is it? In terms of depicting what London would be like if it was genuinely take, you know, if you just got up on a Saturday morning hungover and London had been infected by zombies. Which is the premise. Which is the premise. But, but the clever thing about it is that's backgrounded. The filmmakers know that we all kind of know that. So the zombie stuff is backgrounded and it's a very funny, uh, comedy movie with the, with the fact that London is infested by zombies being a kind of obstacle course that people have to get through. But at the same time, it's genuinely gory. And when does it come out? Uh, not till next year. But it is really, really good. What's the most revolting part? Uh, I, well, I shouldn't give away too many spoilers, but. Dylan Moran meets a pretty sticky end, uh, that's reminiscent of George Romero's Day of the Dead, the third part of the, of the, of the trilogy. Well, that sounds good, man. I'm looking forward to it's that. It's genuinely, genuinely really good. And, and Kill I didn't Bill even have you to went lie to as well? After it. Uh, I went to see Kill Bill, yeah. And how so was that? So did everybody, I think. That got, that, I've seen some pretty stinky reviews for that. Well, it's not gonna please your, your, uh, Tarantino fans who are into the dialogue, because it doesn't have much dialogue, but if you're into, if you know about Asian cinema, even if you don't know about Asian cinema, it's a really good watch. The punching, the kicking... The slicing, the limb severing. Yeah. That's and it's, the main thing. Do you know what my potential problem is? Because I'm not a big, big sort of Charlie's Angels sassy chick fan. <laughs> uh, is it, t is it very heavy on the sassy? No. On the sass? No. Good. Because I have had all the sassy chicks. No, it, it's, it's brutal. It's hardcore. Okay. It's pure, pure killing. And Lucy Liu, personally, I find her a kind of emetic. She's good, man. She's, she? she's good in this. You shouldn't judge her on Charlie's Angels. I'm judging her on every single thing she's done. Well, so you've seen Cypher, haven't you? I've seen Cypher, I've seen Ali McBeal, I've seen Charlie's Angels, I've seen various other piles of old. She's good in this. She gets her scalp. Severed off, doesn't well, she? Well, that's a good enough reason for me to be <laughs> checking out Kill Bill, I can tell you. Okay, I'll be, I'll be telling you all about my exciting trip to the Cures after this oh, one. Weird. That's, uh, that's the trills with Big Sir. I've I, had a complaint in, Adam. What, what have that, you done? That I ruined part of, uh, of Kill Bill by saying that, uh, sh what happens to the lady? Who, Lucy Liu? Yes. Lucy we Lucy said, Lucy. once again, I swear that's not, that's not spoiling anything. Yeah, there's a whole other film to come anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, hold your horses there. Now, you were complaining that we weren't allowed to play, uh, Where is the Love by, uh, the Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, Britain's number one. Yeah. Has been for the last six and weeks. And we're not allowed to play it because it's not on the XFM guest li uh, guest list playlist where is the lav what's wrong with the world where mama? is the lav people living like they ain't got no mama 
It's down at the end. Is that people that dig through the drama? <laughs> Our producer's holding his head in his hands. Where is the lav? Where is the lav? Is that not how it goes? No. Okay, that should then. do. So the thrills were at the Q Awards. I met the thrills, and they seemed like a lovely bunch of coconuts. Of coconuts. No, they they were very nice. Um, and I had a, I had a pretty good time. I was um, accepting an award on behalf of Nigel Godrich, Radiohead's producer, who couldn't be there. Partly, I think, because. Radiohead seemed to have had some big argument with Q, and they they boycotted the ceremony. They just didn't turn up, and they won Best Act in the World today. And rather than any kind of video or speech or anything, there was just a uh, thing that came up on the video screens that was just a picture of Radiohead with flames leaping round it, with just a m typed message saying Radiohead are not talking to Q, and that was the end of that. But they still get the award. They still get the award because it's voted for by the readers of Q and not by uh, the Q people. So nobody themselves. came to pick it up on behalf of them. Nope, absolutely not. Hmm. But anyway, Nigel hasn't fallen out with Q. I don't think he just wasn't able to make it because he's working on the Divine Comedy album. Right. So I picked it up in, on his behalf, and uh, you know it was okay. I had a pretty good time. And uh, if did I did you hang on, did you make us any sort of a speech? Yeah, I, I I made a I sort of pretended that Nigel was um, had given me a note, but he hadn't. No, <laughs> had he told you anything to say? No, he just he just said if you he said I I can't make it. It would be great if you could pick it up and just left it to me. Yeah. He did, he, yeah. So, what? Nothing. What are you going to say, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Sarcastic? So, no, so, so you got up on stage and you said? Got up on stage and said something like, I've just been handed this note, uh, from Nigel Godrich. Which was a lie. Which was a lie. <laughs> and it's, but it was a point, it was a jokey note. It said okay. something like, uh, uh, I'm not going to make it to the Q Awards because I can't be bothered. I'm going to sit at home and watch Maiden in Manhattan with Tom York. And uh, anyway, why would I want to go to the Q, e war uh, Q Awards? It's a load of crap, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I and then it said, if I do win, please could you read out the message on the other side? <laughs> it's like I'd read out the wrong part. You see? Ah. Oh, uh, oh. So there we go. It wow. Didn't, it, the Q Awards. The Q Awards. It was fun. <laughs> I met I met uh, Kevin Rowland. From Dexter's Midnight Runners, that was wow. amazing. And I met Harmar Superstar. He seemed sort of confused and underwhelmed. And um, who else did I meet? Oh, I said hello to Alex James from Blur. He was really nice. And he very satisfyingly said to me, um, I said, Where are you living these days? And he said, Well, I've just bought a house, a very big house in the country. So <laughs> I thought I was pleased by that. Do you think any of these people are currently telling people that they met you? No. No, I'm almost certain they're not. You don't think Kevin Rowland's going, oh yeah, I met Adam from Adam and Joe Well, yesterday. actually, he said to me, uh, I've been trying to write some comedy recently and someone at my record company said, you know what you should do is watch Adam and Joe. So hey. he, I got his address and I'm going to send him a tape of some of our stuff. Don't get too involved. Why not? He's a genius. He's yeah. a genius. Anyway, listen, I had a great night, but I should have left, like, as soon as the whole thing finished. Instead, I went to the after show party bit and that's always a mistake. Everyone was just steaming and it was two hours of pointless drinking that I really could have done without. And do you remember when we got asked, um, by this record company to help out with a Turin Breaks video? Yeah. So basically what the deal was, just before we went to Japan, someone from Turin Breaks record company, uh, asked, uh, asked if we'd help them out with this video. It was set in a private jet and it was all shots of the band looking out of the window and singing the song, intercut with shots of the kind of crazy passengers you'd expect to see on a soft indie rock plane. So, um, anyway, so far so boring. They put subtitles on it. You know, just uh, to show what the people in the video were yeah, actually Yeah, and they thinking. wanted us to rewrite the subtitles. Yeah, because they were very lame. Yeah. But we only had a night to do it, like one night. Yeah. They said, just... didn't you? But, well, I didn't do it, you did it. Well, we were supposed to both do it, but you, you were busy. But otherwise busy. engaged. <laughs> yeah. In watching telly. In watching telly. So anyway, I dashed off a few things and, you know, I did my best. And, and you're not telling me you, you, they used them. Well, um, <laughs> this lady came up, came up at the, at the party and uh, she was introduced to me as this woman from the record company, this is Tina from blah blah blah, and she said, oh yeah, you remember those captions you did for the Turin Breaks video? So I said, yeah, yeah. She said, yeah, yeah, they were absolute crap. You know? Mm-hmm. And she said, I mean, you know, I know you only had a day to do them, but they were rubbish. So I got really angry. And I just, I, you know, we never got paid or anything. And I just thought, what? You are the stupidest, rudest woman in the world, coming up to me and, like, choosing to be rude to me about a favour that we did what you. What if she's listening? I don't care. If she's listening, you're an idiot, and you can come in here and I'll... <laughs> so, what if they were rubbish? Well, I I'll give you a few examples, you can decide. <laughs> I think they might have been rubbish. <laughs> they were a bit... They weren't totally genius. Hey, what are you putting down <laughs> my things for as well? I'm just being devil's advocate. 
you're not, you're being a jerk. So listen, there was, one of them was a beardy man eating, maybe I shouldn't read them out. Then. <laughs> They'll just good. be rubbish. Yeah, they will, won't they? <laughs> but anyway, that's not the point. She was just so, you know, it, I, it just wound me up so much, it totally Sounds like she was in, impolite. And she said, um, I said, well, maybe you're crap at your job. And she said, well, I'm not. Anyway, you don't know about my job, I know about what you do, and those things were absolute rubbish. You know what? The man who wrote Life of Pi is right. Drinking is degrading. Well, you're saying it was all because I was drunk. Yeah, you were drunk, she was drunk, drinking's degrading. I was absolutely sober. She you were was probably a... drunk when you wrote the lines as well. Well, if anyone from Turing Brakes Record Company wants a favour in future, they can eat themselves. I'll do it. Yeah, that's the Dub Pistols. You're listening to XFM, uh, London's 104.9. I'm Adam Buxton. And I'm Joe Cornish. So do you think I went off the rails a bit there, Joe? No, I, well, no, I think you're right to be, uh, uh, this is Adam was just telling us that somebody came up and said that some work he did for them was rubbish <laughs> when he'd done it for them as a favour. But there's various variables in this equation. Your work might have been rubbish. Yeah, not the point, because it was a favour for which I didn't get paid. And so your point is that if someone does a favour, if so if you do a favour for someone, even if you do it really badly, it is not right for them to call you on it. Uh, well, kind of, yeah, yeah. You just don't... A, a, a this is an interesting question. A, this wasn't the case because I didn't think it was bad. B, if you do something for someone, uh, you know, and you don't even know them, and, okay, so they don't end up using it. You don't go up to them and say, yeah, that was rubbish, because that's just rude. It's mm. just basic rudeness. Mm. Are you not convinced? No, no, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I, j you know, I just would, would, uh, I'm not sure about carrying out a vendetta against her on, ra on the radio. <laughs> do, you, the, do you know the definition of a vendetta? This isn't a vendetta. I'm, or, I'm just basically saying that it was rude and that's what happened to me at the Q Awards. I didn't mention her name or anything. Well, no, but you've got that big picture of her and, and that picture of her house and the plans and the knives. Oh, I know where she lives and I will find <laughs> her, if that's what you mean. <laughs> so you what know what? You know what? Something that got me this week? What? I was, do you know this phrase, ego surfing? No. Ego surfing is when you surf for your own name. Oh, yeah. Uh, everyone, everyone does that. I do you're that the, a lot. You're I'm the, the UK king ego of ego surfing. surfing. So I was ego surfing. I found an interview we'd done for a student magazine, CMU Online, and they're big fans of us. It was with you, actually, not an interview with me. And they referred to, they were a big fan of the show. They referred to our, our shock video series where we voice over pornographic footage. They referred to it, watching it as, as like swallowing a wasp. Well, that just doesn't mean <laughs> anything. <laughs> yeah, it does. It means that for a fan of the Adam and Joe show, it was incredibly painful. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you, Joe, you tend to misinterpret things quite a lot because I don't know why you Can't misinterpret swallowing a wasp. That's not good in any, in any way, is it? It might be. Unless it's chocolate covered. A, an exotic snack. I suppose so. Anyway, I'm, I don't mind about it. I don't care. I'm happy. Because <laughs> they're right. It is rubbish. It's Hooray! Not, it's genius. Oh, it's a lovely Saturday. Here's some lovely music. That's the delays. Um, that's the, uh, the single's called for A Long Time Coming, the fourth single from the Southampton Four Piece. They're signed to Rough Trade, a debut album follows in the new year. And they're on tour with the Sleepy Jackson, so you'll get to see them, uh, if you were our competition winner this week. Uh, Vaughan, I think you're going to be seeing the delays on Tuesday at the Astoria. You're listening to Adam and Joe on XFM filling in for Ricky and Stephen. Uh, coming up after the break, we are going to be getting into Ditties in the Dock, I think, or very soon anyway. Um, Joe, are you okay there? I'm not involved in this link. No, well, you could be, see, if you wanted to. Well, no, it's just going to be a short, a short one. Yeah, well, it is now. XFM. <laughs> Let me tell you what they say when I'm pulling up my drawers. When I'm pulling up my drawers... What's wrong with that? Well, when, let me tell you what they... Let me tell you what they say when I'm pulling up my drawers. What do they say? Ooh-wee. Uh, What's happening there? Well, he's finished. What? Making... Doing the thing <laughs> that made them say ooh-wee. Doing a wee. No, yeah, probably. Ooh-wee. <laughs> anyway. So the girls are just excited by the wee. Yeah, well, they Ooh, are. look at that wee. That was Mark Ronson and Ghostface Killer. That is a great record. I really like that record. Good. It's got a lovely little ding-dong bell in it and fantastic strings and great rapping. 
<laughs> oh, the wrapping is brilliant. The wrapping it's on so, that record. It's so nicely wrapped. Was amazing. Oh. Okay, so this, uh, music means that it's Ditties in the Dock time. Yeah, Ditties in the Dock. It's time for a bad-tempered face-off between <laughs> me and Joe about the only <laughs> track that we're allowed to choose to play this week. We have to sell you, the listeners, our records. Uh, we don't play your sample from the record. Nothing as easy as that. We have to use words and our powers of persuasion to get you to vote for our choice. So, who, who wants to go first this week? I don't mind, man. Um, okay, I will let you go first. I usually go first. Uh, well, okay, I'll go first then. <laughs> okay, go first. I thought first. you said you didn't mind. <laughs> go first, do it, man. What do you got? What do you got? Okay, so, today I've got a track from, uh, rock and roll music's greatest secret, and they are called Spoon. They're a band from Austin, Texas, and they are fantastic. They've had about three albums out, and this is a track from their latest album, Kill the Moonlight, and it is only one and a half minutes long. It's called You Gotta Feel It, and it's a total peach. Um, it's brilliant, stripped down piece of pop genius that sounds like nothing else around at the moment, uh, even though it's a fairly straightforward song. I guarantee you won't uh, dislike it, and Ooh. even better, you will be propelled into the fantastic world of Spoon, a place that I guarantee you need to be. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what are you going to choose? I thought you were trying a bit too hard there with Spoon. Yeah, just shut up and what well, you, you, you basically you know you've lost. Spoon. <laughs> we tried to Spoon. keep these ditties Spoon. in the dock secret Spoon. earlier. Spoon. We tried to hide what Spoon. records we'd be playing. It's gotta be Spoon. But then the producer left my ditty in the dock. Spoon. No, he left Ad he left Spoon, Spoon out on the deck. And so it was, uh, uh the, 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 the gaff was blown. So listen, this is a man in trouble already. <clears throat> I'm not, I haven't even got to my pitch. R tr in trouble. Are you Preamble. ready? Spoon. Are you ready? Spoon. Are yeah. you ready? Go on, Spoon. My choice for Ditty in the Dock, Joe's choice for Ditty in the Dock, Joe, Joe, Joe's choice for Ditty in the Dock, is from the video game Parappa the Rapper. Hey! Everybody hey! loves Parappa the Rapper. Spoon. And it's a fantastic song called Chop Chop Master Onions Rap. And if you've never played Parappa the Rapper, then, uh, it'll mean nothing to you. It's just a really, really good, fun song. But if you have played Parappa the Rapper, uh, you'll remember it's the one that goes kick, punch, it's all in the mind. If you want to test me, I'm sure you'll find the things that I'll teach you. It's sure to beat you. And that sort of stuff is really wicked. <laughs> and, oh, uh, God. <laughs> and, uh, no, it's really good. And, and it's Parappa the Rapper, Chop Chop Master <laughs> Onions Rap. <laughs> and, and when it wins, because it's Food. clearly going to win, uh, when it wins, you can punch punch along to it. If you're with a friend, you can punch them and kick them you're and beat them up you to the sound of this song. So vote for trouble. Chop Chop Master Onions Rap from Parappa the Rapper. Okay. Video game music. Come on. The number to call is 0800 the Rapper. 800 1234. 0800 800 1234. Just call that number and say Parappa the Rapper. We're going to take the first five calls and the best of five will be played. The v And you either say Parappa or Spoon. Spoon or Parappa will ask you. You basically say Parappa the Rapper. Spoon. Spoon. Say, call up spoon. and say, Parappa the Rapper. Spoon. Oh, spoon. wait, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4, Parappa the Rapper. Chop, spoon. Chop, chop, Master Onions Rap. Chop, 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 chop. Tell us whenever you're ready in there. One, two, one, two. Excellent. It's Ditties in the Dock. Okie dokie, we're gonna take the first five calls just to remind you again, Joe, uh, voted for... I didn't vote for, I'm asking the listeners to vote for Parappa the Rapper with... Chop Chop Master Onions Rap. And I'm encouraging people to vote for Spoon, the best band you are gonna hear this to this day or any other. We only get to play one of them, you guys make the choice. We've and got five callers lined up. It's the best of five. I'm, I'm not gonna chat to you guys on the phone, so please don't feel I offended. Am, I'm gonna steam right the way through. <coughs> You're not, you know, Joe. Where's well, uh, two of us on this show, Ad? Yeah, yeah, but we, we, ha we have to steam through this part, all right? right. Okay. So, caller one, uh, is it Parappa or Spoon? Caller one, Parappa or Spoon? Parappa. Parappa, one vote for Parappa. Good caller man. two, is it Parappa or Spoon? Spoon, yeah. Spoon, 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 Spoon. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> caller three, Parappa one or Spoon? Nil. Call a three, Parappa or Spoon? Come on, call a three. Parappa, definitely. Yeah, call oh. a three, definitely, yeah. Okay. Two, one to Parappa. I need another one for Spoon, please, please, please. Come, Come on, Call a four, is it Parappa or Spoon? Spoon. Nice. No, don't be silly, it's two all, it's two all, this is the decider! Okay, here we go for the decider. Oh call a five, is it Parappa oh god, or oh Spoon? God. Oh my god, please be Parappa. Call a five. Please be Parappa. Parappa. Yes! Oh, you're joking, Yeah, oh, you? you made such a good choice, listeners, I love you. This, ah, oh, they hit each other, not violently, but with joy. 
when you hear the fantastic sounds <laughs> of Chop Chop Master Hunter. This is a great day for XFM. It's a great day for Britain. It's a great day for Parappa the hey, Rapper. Joe, Joe, two people on the show. Yeah, 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 but you've lost. Joe, two people so, on the show. Yeah, but you've lost. So, you at the moment, there's only one. Punk. So, let's hear it. Parappa the Rapper. Yeah. Hey, It's all in the mind. If you wanna test me, I'll see you find the things of teacher. You sure of teacher. But nevertheless, to get a lesson from teacher, now kick, kick, punch, punch, jump, tap, block, block. Once more, now kick, kick, punch, punch, jump, tap, and block, block. It's gonna get rocky. We're gonna move down to the next to jump. You now jump, 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 turn, turn, pause. You pause. must carefully jump, jump, pause, pause, duck, duck, and turn, turn. Mm, yes, I see you're getting better. Kick to the limit in order to get to now. Kick, punch, kick, punch. I'll turn and kick you if you <laughs> Block, turn and kick it. Hey, we haven't completed the level yet. We come on. Have. <laughs> I can't believe that. The, uh, <laughs> listeners of XFM, come on. <laughs> it's you always... like, uh, come on, Adam, you like this game. I do and like this And you like this song. Uh, when I bought it, first time we were in Tokyo, I bought this with you in mind. I thought, hey, that'll be a good track that Adam and I can really enjoy listening to together. No, you didn't. And I did. When it comes down to a choice between that and Spoon, I'm afraid... The right choice has been made. The right choice was not made. Well done, well, listeners. Well, listen, uh, okay, fair enough, you know, I, I concede defeat. Uh, I enjoyed Rapper the Rapper, but it wasn't better than Spoon, and I do encourage you out there to go and purchase pretty much any Spoon album, and I'll tell you, it'll be the best thing you've bought all year. A series of sneaks I can particularly recommend. You're mm. listening to Adam and Joe on XFM, filling in for Ricky and Stephen, uh, who are gonna be back with you guys at the beginning of November, but we're here, sorry, <laughs> for the next three weeks or so. Everything gonna be iry. That's, uh, Finley Quay and Dice. Did we establish whether it was Quay or Key? Nobody really knows. <clears throat> Sorry. Nobody really knows. I think it's, it's Quay. Okay. Well, there you go. Mm. Um, so that's pretty much it for, uh, for this week from Adam and Joe. Oh, that flew by, didn't it? Yeah, you know, a little bit of recrimination, bit of bitterness, bit of jealousy, some hey, resentment. Hey, none coming from this side of the desk, sister. Yeah, you wish, man. Oh, you see, there it is again. <laughs> <You are so laughs> My hands are clean. Annoying. Um, anyway, listen, just take a look in the mirror, uh... Who are you talking to now? You, and, right. um, before next week, <laughs> sort, sort yourself out. Come on, Grumpy. Um, what are you gonna watch on telly tonight? To what am I gonna up? watch? Uh, probably I'm gonna watch The Matrix Reloaded, which I got on DVD. Really? I bought that as well. It's gonna be rubbish though, isn't it? I've s well, have you not seen it? No, I've been waiting. Well, it's probably better to watch on DVD than it is in the cinema, where you can't leave, switch it off, fast forward, or eat. Right. Proper food. I'm, look I'm looking forward to the, all the extras and the making of. Mm. And, uh, Why? Because uh, I, I like those things, man. I like seeing people squirm and try and take seriously some huge pile of dog muck they've created. Did you know one of the directors, one of the Wachowski brothers, is, is a transvestite? Dresses as a woman. Uh, and, and he really wanted to, and he calls himself Jenny or something, and he really wanted to be credited as, like, Jenny Wachowski on the film, but the other brother had to really struggle to... This is all a sort of, um, uh, it's a bit of a sort of street myth. Not an urban myth, a street myth. I think it's true, though. I think it's true as uh, well. Maybe even, uh, maybe even a, um, transsexual, I think. I tell you what I saw this week, Underworld. 
How was that? Ah, oh. Kate Beckinsale keeping oh. in touch. Oh, oh, and it made the Matrix look, it was so derivative of the Matrix, made the Matrix look like, um, look like Citizen Kane. Oh, Citizen Kane. Yes, the best film ever made. Best film ever made, yeah. Uh, Underworld is reprehensible rubbish. Well, I wouldn't have It's not the that. XFM film of the month, is it? It's bound to be. Why no, did it's you, not. Why did you go and see that, man? Bored. You must have been bored. <coughs> so are you gonna be watching Air America? Uh, no, I've never seen Air America. Well, don't bother. It's got the dreadful Mel Gibson. <laughs> How on You're earth sounding like he... your dad. I know, I know. It's more and more like your dad every day. <laughs> it's true. Well, I am his son. I'm what, what are you looking into... forward to? Come on, we want something to, okay. th that you're gonna be excited Apart from The Matrix, people who can't get Region 1 DVDs ahead of time, like Fancy Pants Buxton. Well, it's out next week, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not out tonight. What can people watch tonight? Okay, tonight you can watch Married to the Mob. Uh, that's a Jonathan Demi film. That's which... your pick. Well, I don't know, but... We just want one thing. Come on, bang. Okay, Beck, live at Brixton Academy, 2.55 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> on ITV. <laughs> Did, didn't we wait? Did, is that the gig we went to? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, the, the acoustics were awful when you were there. They might be better on telly, actually. Well, they'd be great on telly. What, what are you picking? What am I picking? I don't know. Meet the Apple Gates? Uh, no, well, I'm picking the Fame Academy final. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just because I'm not interested, I was a big fan of Peter. Hmm. The Stopey Indie Kid. Stopey? The Stopey Indie Kid. It's like, is that an Indian race? Uh, yeah. The Stopey no. Indians? The <laughs> Stopies, yeah. <laughs> uh, only because he was just a, just, you know, amazing. Yeah. And, uh... Do you not like the young pixie lesbian lady? Um, yeah, I do. I think she's gonna be the British Avril Lavigne. Lavigne. Hmm. Anyway, that's pretty much it for us for this week. We could go on and 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 on, but we're being stopped. Come round, uh, say hello, take us for a drink and we'll go on and on and on. Just, yeah. Three o'clock outside XFM in Leicester Square. Yeah. We're not busy. Let's party. Um, okay, well listen, thanks a lot for listening and thanks for, uh, emailing us Yeah, thanks for all the emails, especially after we complained that we weren't getting enough. There was, there was a terrific, uh, wave of emails and thank you very much for everybody who, who sent them in. I read them all. And, uh, we'll be with you again this time next week. Have, Have a good, good week. time, yeah. Love you, bye. Bye.